Before a rocket ever gets to orbit, commercial space companies are faced with two major obstacles, namely capital and skilled labor force. An additional level of complexity is added by the surge of space startups over the past decade, which generates a need to reduce rocket engine development costs and duration as a means to remain competitive and attractive to investors. A rocket engine is a complex system with many potential configurations. Each engine has different size and power requirements, and each component must be designed with the full system in mind to match component performance on a wide operational range, which leads to additional software and manpower demands. To offset expenses incurred by these requirements, companies will often invest in lower-cost, short-term solutions, such as developing and utilizing in-house design codes to generate basic geometries, and then validating these geometries and doing the bulk of the quote-unquote design in a CFD program. Quite often, the result is that companies are left with a number of different tools which don't integrate with one another, don't fulfill all development needs, and require additional manpower to cover the multiple disciplines. All of this, in turn, leads to communication and availability bottlenecks, as the development process is iterative in nature. To make matters worse, 3D optimization, such as CFD, FEA, and profiling, is the most consuming phase of the design process from a resource standpoint. So each iteration incurs additional costs and slows the development process substantially. There's a better method, which brings us to the topic of today's video. In this video, we will demonstrate how the Axtreme platform can be used to design a liquid rocket engine turbo pump for in-space propulsion while accounting for the importance of the engine operational off-design modes. The best turbo pump design will be determined based on an integrated parameter that accounts for the turbo pump efficiency at all off-design modes with corresponding weight coefficients that represent the engine operation duration at each mode according to the flight trajectory. The initial data for the turbo pump design includes desired thrust levels and the weight coefficients for each mode of operation, and is provided by the ballistic department beforehand. It is assumed that the chamber pressure, nozzle exit pressure, and fuel pair are assigned in advance, but these could also be determined if desired. Three off-design modes are considered here. The first step of the turbo pump design is the determination of the chamber pressure and component's mass flow rate to provide the required thrust at each off-design condition. The chamber pressure and hydraulic net losses at each mode give the pump's discharge pressure conditions. The nozzle thermodynamic analysis can be determined using the CEA tool to find the engine flow rate for the desired specific impulse. Having the thermodynamic information about off-design modes, the turbo pump maximal available shaft rotational speed that satisfies the absence of cavitation is calculated. The methodology of this shaft speed determination is based on the pump inlet and outlet pressures, component properties, and the mass flow rate. The turbo pump design procedure starts from the oxidizer pump design. The generation of the boundary condition combinations, such as inlet and outlet pressures, mass flow rates, diameters, rotation speed, and others for the pump design are performed using a Monte Carlo method. The total number of possible designs to create from scratch is specified by the user. Once the boundary condition combinations were generated, the data consequently, design by design, or in parallel, a few designs simultaneously, is transferred to the extreme block, where the design of the first pump is performed. If the solver was not able to design a pump for these conditions, or the design is out of the constraints limit, then no further work is done for the current data set, and a new set of boundary conditions from the Monte Carlo block is used for the next design iteration. If the design procedure is successful, the pump geometry is then used to perform off-design calculations for a given inlet pressure and mass flow rate. The shaft rotational speed for these off-design points is determined to satisfy the pump outlet pressure, which was calculated for that specific operating condition. Once all required modes for the pump have been calculated and the corresponding shaft rotational speeds have been determined, the pump map is reviewed. The criteria for a good pump design are the absence of cavitation, not exceeding the maximal tip circumferential velocity, and the capability of the pump to operate at all required modes. If at least one criterion is not satisfied, the design of a new oxidizer pump is started 
and the current design is discarded. If all criteria fit the requirements, the process moves to the fuel pump design and analysis. The output data from the oxidizer pump design and analysis are the shaft speed, power, and efficiency at each off-design mode. The algorithm of the fuel pump design is similar to the oxidizer one. Since the entire turbo pump was chosen to operate on a single shaft without a gearbox, three values of shaft speed are determined based on oxidizer pump characteristics. If at the design or analysis stage one or more criteria were not satisfied, then the design of a new fuel pump is performed. It is obvious that for each oxidizer pump correspond several fuel pump designs that satisfy the desired flow conditions. The fuel pump design that features the highest weighted average efficiency across the operating modes among all the designs generated is automatically selected as the optimal geometry for that given oxidizer pump. Before the turbine design can be started, the required power should be determined for each mode based on the power consumption of both pumps. The turbine design and analysis procedures are close to the ones presented for the pumps. In the design phase, limitation on the minimal blade height, flow exit angle, mean diameter to blade height, and tip circumferential velocity are considered to sort out reasonable turbine geometries at the design point. The required power is achieved by iterating on the turbine flow rate. The design that provides the required power at all modes with minimal mass flow rate is accepted as the optimal geometry for the given oxidizer and fuel pumps. If no turbine design was found, a new design of an oxidizer pump is started. Once the design of the oxidizer pump and the corresponding most optimal designs of the fuel pump and turbine for the given set of oxidizer boundary conditions are found, the selection criteria to determine the best turbo pump geometry are calculated. Once all possible designs of turbo pump were determined, the turbo pump design with the best efficiency given the off design mode coefficients is automatically selected as the optimal design to use for the rocket engine based on the mission requirements such as orbit and payload and the propellants it used. Through the integration, automation, and MDO capabilities of Xtreme Ion, this approach can lead to substantial savings in both time and associated development costs, as work which would usually take weeks can be completed in a day.